chance to uh, show iOS to the people and to show the new creativity you can do with the iPad and iPhone. So truly, it's a good event and hopefully enough people get the feeling of using the iPhone and iPad for creating music. excited to see who is using iPad or iOS devices right now, who is going to use it in the future. And it's very interesting because we have a few young people coming, like maybe 15, 14 or even younger. But we have also people that are in their 50s or 60s that are also interested. And that really shows the strength of, of the iOS devices because it's, it's so easy to use and it's really for everyone. I'm studying, I'm still a student, and I'm trying to, to get my, my feet into this business. And so I think I'm really more to enjoy today here, yeah, to see what's going on. I think it brings a lot of like-minded people together. Um, and I think people from different um, areas of work, like here it looks like a lot of musicians, and like software engineers, and designers, and DJs. It's a cool mix. All my artists use Apple, Apple and iOS and, and iPads to make their music, so that's why I came to see what's available. I think it's a new interactive way of uh, intuitive beat making. Without further ado, let's go into iMachine. love this thing, but we just don't know what we should do with it. So there's a lot of potential to, to work with it. I find it very interesting because it, it helps you create your own software in a way. Um, it's more than a controller. It can add some intelligence to your interface. I'm from Lime and uh, today I've been talking about the Lima and how the Lima in particular can be used to control Ableton Lime. Important is what are people doing with it. Uh, so what the developers do, what the hardware people do and what in the end of the day what the musicians and producers and everyone who wants to be creative is doing with it.